Praise God. How many feel the Lord so far this morning? Woo! It's all good. You know, the Word says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I think we can penetrate the upper stratosphere. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'll say so. If you're a say so, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Good deal. I'm not going to get into... Um, last year we showed the part of the CMA presentation um, in the basics and then the general of it. And I'm going to talk about those in, in basics and then I'm going to um, explain the ministry partners and then we're going to show somewhat of a uh, short series of DVDs lasting about 15 minutes or so. And there'll be several different ones on there. On uh, one of our ministry partners that we help support, which is Open Doors Ministries, and I'll get into that later on. Um, and then after that, um, I'm going to give a short sermon. I hope it's a short sermon. It's designed to be one, but so if I get too long, just go knock that and I'll be good, you know. So, anyway, it's good to see you all smiling faces. If you, if you hear something you like, you say amen. If you hear something you don't really like, just pray about it. But I think it's all going to be good. But anyway, uh, let me get started here. And first of all, I'd like to, Pastor, thank you. And, and uh, yes, let's thank you for letting us use this facility to come present just another part of the ministry of which Christ has laid out for all believers. And you know, the eye never looked at the hand and said, I'm better than you. And the foot never looked at the gizzard and said, I can do a better job than you, but we all work together as a body. That's how Christ designed it. And I think that's a fabulous way of how He orchestrates what He's doing. Um, so, uh, last year, uh, CMA would like to thank um, Crosswalk Fellowship Church that uh, donated $125 towards the cause of CMA. Uh, CMA is Christian... Motorcyclist Association. We're not a bike club. We're not a riding club. We're not a gang per se. It is a ministry on two wheels, or four wheels, or three wheels, or if you're brave enough, you can do it on one wheel. But we primarily reach out to the motorcycling community with the gospel of Jesus Christ to try to bring the message of love and of hope to a lost and dying world. In case you haven't noticed, this is a lost and dying world. Many, many people are without Christ in their life that need to have Christ in their life. So that is uh, primarily um, what we do. Um, we go to different bike rallies. We go to different churches. We support secular events to the degree of not supporting what they're doing, but they open their doors per se to us and say, if you want to put up your stuff and put up your table and talk to people every once in a while, that's that's fine. But see, when they, that door flops open, they don't know what they could put it down because we're going to tell somebody about Jesus. And thankfully, we still live in a country where you can do that. Amen. And we should never ever take it for granted because mm -hmm. days will probably come where they're going to start tightening the reins on us. We look at our schools. We look at all different facets of, I can go on and on, but if you're anywhere close to being able to know what's going on in the news, they want to take your privileges and your rights from you. Believers need to... Uh, come together and be a body. Uh, that being said, I won't go any deeper than that. Um, probably the DVD will bring some more relevance to that. Um, so all this money brought in is goes towards ministry. So the way it breaks down, we have three ministry partners. The Jesus Film Project, who right now, the last number I understand what they do with the Jesus film is they uh, 
recapture and re-event on a movie the death, burial, the, uh, the death, the life, the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in a, in a dramatized form. Because everybody knows picture form seems to get the message across more than just hearing it. We seem to retain it better up here when we see it. And so thus far what I've heard is they've translated this Jesus film project into uh, 1175 different languages so far. And so now they, they go into the remotest parts of the earth and in the different countries, third world countries, second world countries where people don't even have electricity. They don't even know what electricity is. And they present the gospel because they have this battery pack and they have it's all laid out. They can just set the projectors up and jump over. And these people will walk for miles. They never heard the gospel before. So in that part, we're helping to fulfill the Great Commission. Not we, but as a small part, you know. Um, the next thing is Open Doors Ministries. Um, Open Doors supports missionaries who go to uh, second and third world countries. A lot of third world countries, and the DVD will bring out more of that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, where the gospel, quite frankly, ain't welcome. It is not welcome. We, we live in America under freedom. And um, this will help kind of break the bubble a little bit and look past what we only see around us and see what is really out there. And it's really out there and it really happens. The third ministry that <clears throat> we help support is Missionary Ventures. And they provide modes of transportation to uh, indigenous pastors or pastors that are native or local to the area where they're at. I had to figure out what indigenous was before I did this. And uh, so, but we help provide modes of transportation for them. Well, if they live around a bunch of water, guess what they're going to get? They're probably going to get a boat and motor. Because without that, they're on foot. And if they get in a boat and motor, they can go from one little village, the next little village, the next little village, you follow them. You know, or if they're in rocky, mountainous places, guess what? They get a dirt bike. So it's that line of thinking. Okay? So, with all that being said, it's hard to do all this fast, you know? <clears throat> Crosswalk, we thank you, gave $125. So the way this breaks down, and I'm not going to bore you with a bunch of numbers and details, CMA have studied this for over 35 years. They've taken a lot, taken a lot of time and effort to be able to substantiate, justify, and be accountable for what they do with the finances. So these numbers are probably as close as anybody's going to be able to figure. Um, and what they have found out is that, um, well, first let me back up. Uh, of this donation, 20% goes to the Jesus Film Project, which I talked about to translate the Bible into all these different languages. Um, they say for about, this is going to represent $25 of that $125 that goes there. So they're saying about 250 people will see this film in their native language. And of those 250 people, they're saying 25 people they have found of those 250 will make a decision for Christ. This has been over 30 years in study. Okay. <clears throat> Open Doors Ministries. 20% um, goes to Open Doors Ministries, which will be $25. <coughs> of that $25, one Bible, I don't know if the cost has gone up, but one Bible typically is about $4. So, um, th that $25 this $25 will help get 62 Bibles. Oh, I'm sorry, hold on a minute. Yeah. 
Yeah, 6.2, yeah, sorry. So, and they say typically with one Bible that in these villages where they don't have a Bible, they may have a page of a Bible and they will share a page with their, with their, with their family, with the people in the tribe. But they say on the average, one Bible is shared by 50 people. So, potentially, you're, you're affecting a lot of people. It's just $25. The other $25 goes to Missionary Ventures, which helps provide those modes of transportation to these pastors in these second and third world countries. Is it last year or the year before we bought a camel? I can't remember when it was. Two years ago? Two years ago, Two years ago bought a camel. It wasn't in the swamps, obviously. It was somewhere out in the desert or wherever, you know, but we bought a camel. <clears throat> now these bikes that let me go back this thing. The motorcycles we're buying are not what we see out here. They're like dirt bikes. They're like twenty-five hundred, maybe three thousand dollars for a bike. If they can get around, they can spread the gospel out a lot further. Okay. So you ask the question, well, well where's the other forty percent go? Well, here's the answer. Uh, CMA receives forty percent, or the difference of those of that money. Uh, and they are for the outreach efforts, for the outreach efforts here in the United States. Part of what that is, the, and I don't have one with me. I got one back there. I think I was going to pass, pass out one of the got gospel cups. It is literally. Thank you, Jim. Is that where you're going? It is literally the message of salvation on a coffee cup. And when we go to bike, these bike rallies, we pass them out because they're thirsty. Well, and the interesting thing we have found out about these gospel cups is they don't throw them on the ground like they would just they they hold on to them. And that's good because now every time they hold on to it and look at it, that's just one more opportunity that they see that word. <coughs> and, it's, and it just takes time. None of us got saved on the first time. I didn't get saved the first time. Sometimes it takes some, you know. Sometimes it takes some pushing and prodding and, you know. Tim's got a gospel cup here. He'll pass it around for you. So that 40% helps offset the cost of those, which cost $70 for a case and there's a thousand cups in there. Okay, so that is how those funds get distributed out. None of that goes back. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think I'm wrong, goes back to our local chapter for administrative use of nothing. It all goes towards ministry. So I thank you so much for that and Jake getting ready here in just a, about 30 seconds or so. To, I have uh, about five short clips on DVD. Uh, like I said, it's only about 15 minutes. And uh, this part here is going to be geared more, as I said earlier, towards Open Doors Ministries, which is where you see part of what they do. Um, so this is kind of the bigger picture for um, people to kind of look outside the box. There's a box to look outside of, and it's not just within these four walls. But uh, thank you, and then uh, time for Biden. I'll give a short message afterwards. And so if you're ready, Really, really, I'm ready. A face can tell a story like lyrics of a song. Each line is carefully written in time. There's beauty in each facet A poetry in time Eternal hope undying to be sung Can you see it in their eyes? A faith that can move mountains
mountains Not a tear can erase what God has done Can you see it in their hearts A love above all others Not a day is lost when we are giving all Can you see it now? Can you see? they had to lift the hearts of others in our world One day we'll hear the stories of all that they have done God's face will shine upon us like the sun Can you see Not a tear can erase what God has done Can you see it in their hearts A love above all others Not a day is lost and we are giving all Can you see it now? Can you see? anywhere in the world. We are part of a body. body.
to know for Chiban Moko, with your book, better not. But you could japping or gachi, but you could do to a banana gachu or more metal gas. Ellos torturaron a nuestro pastor y al resto de la iglesia. Después vinieron y los mataron. But you could jap twin, you could jap twin. No man booked up, who got keep a kikuban, little book back one time. Y nos dijeron que no podíamos orar ni alabar al Señor. We're <laughs> Chiglega ke gaban twenty maj, gaban yupne maj. Kalo nakaya na wiskar. Anyara ni chipe nalinge Jesus al masaya chape pod. Yo les dije, si me matan, voy a estar con Jesús. Ustedes me quieren matar o me quieren dejar vivir, no importa, yo gano. Jesús dijo, ¿tamen pi po lo? ¿Tamen cómo no pueden pi po ni me na? Crammed into containers just like this one are hundreds of Christians in Eritrea today. Egypt. Although the country allows the Christian church to function, it is illegal to change one's religion. House church leaders continue to be arrested in many provinces. Each year, Open Doors assembles the World Watch List to focus the world's attention on places where religious freedom is limited, where persecution occurs. The list includes the 50 most oppressive places in the world for Christians to live. The purpose is to enable followers of Jesus around the world to unite in prayer, advocacy, assistance, and encouragement for suffering believers. Let me tell you about the top 10 countries on the World Watch List for 2010. Number 10, Uzbekistan. Here it is illegal to tell people about Jesus 
or import religious materia. Media campaigns against Christians are widespread, and many are forced to leave their homes due to threats by their communities. Number 9. Laos Christians here are under strict government surveillance. Communities apply severe pressure to anyone who abandons the worship of evil spirits. Number 8. Mauritania Converting to Christianity is a forbidden here. The government is increasing the pressure on Christians through threats of imprisonment or death. They're seeking to eliminate the gospel's presence and impact. Number 7. Yemen Islam is the state religion. No one is allowed to convert from this religion. Disobeying this law brings severe opposition and possible death from authorities and extremists. Number 6. Afghanistan Christians must remain hidden here. If they are discovered, they face the loss of their family, home, and job. They are beaten, imprisoned, and often killed. Number 5. Maldives All citizens must embrace Islam. If anyone converts to another religion, they face the loss of citizenship. The government believes this severe law promotes national unity and retains their control on these islands. This is the least evangelized country in the world. Number 4. Somalia Islam is the state religion here as well. There is no religious freedom. Christians have been kidnapped, raped, and killed in 2009. Converts who are allowed to live become family outcasts and practice their faith in secret under extremely dangerous conditions. Number 3. Saudi Arabia Non-Muslim public worship is forbidden. Disobedience brings arrest, flogging, and deportation. Christians risk death threats and honor killings. Number 2. Iran According to a new law, converts to Christianity face a mandatory death sentence. House churches are monitored by secret police, and members are often arrested, questioned, and beaten. Number 1. North Korea Everyone is required to worship the leaders, Kim Jong-il and his father. The regime believes their power will collapse if they fail to stop the spread of Christianity. When Christians are discovered, they are sent to deadly labor camps or secretly executed. You can learn more about helping Christians who are persecuted in these and other countries by visiting Open Doors website. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know what? The Lord, I had to show you the other side of the coin. And, that, and I barely scratched the surface. <coughs> Here's the deal. The Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is our hope. That is what He has promised. Looking outside the walls sometimes is a bit strange if you've never looked outside the walls, if you've never looked outside the box. It's real. But we know the one that overcomes. Okay? So, I'm not trying to bring a message of fear. Okay? It's not my intention. It's just to see and get a glimpse. Okay? Am I cool? Good? Alright. Had to say that. It's I haven't seen that. It's a bit. It's a bit different. Mm -hmm. Turn it this way. Turn it that way. Hallelujah. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I can get through this relatively quick. If I go too long, let me know. <clears throat> The war you, here's, here's the title of the message. The war you're in, whether you realize it or not, is not yours. Let me say it again. The war you're in, whether you really realize it or not, is not your war. 
there have been many generals throughout the time that have kind of stuck out in my mind. One that sticks out in my mind right now is General Douglas MacArthur, five-star general, born in 1880, died in 1964, 84 years old, served in the military over 60 years. Medal of Army recipient, two Purple Hearts, seven Silver Stars. He made a comment one time, he said, there is no substitute for victory. Let me paraphrase that. Without a made up mind, there will be no possible chance of victory. Does that sink in a bit? Without a made up mind, there is no possible chance of victory. James says it a different way in chapter 1. James, he said, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And you can substitute that with woman teenager, elderly person, whatever. You know, as, as a sailor sets the course out on the ship, he has point one and he has point two. He's got a plot, a course. He knows where he's starting and he knows where he's finishing. We have to assume and realize that there will ever be storms on the ocean. So in that planning stage, one thing you have to know how to do, and I'm just going to relay it back to sailboats because it's just easier to picture that. The wind may come from so many different directions, but it's the setting of that sail. Even if you have to zigzag along the way, you're going in the right direction. Same way with our walk in faith. We're going to have the storms. We're going to have the trials. We're going to have the tribulations. Jesus told us that. But it's the setting of the sail that keeps the inertia going in the right direction. It catapults us towards that course. Mankind has lived in religion and in tradition under the curse that has already been broken, Jesus broke the curse. Because in the most part, many churches have not fully grasped the truth about the righteousness of God in Christ. She has basically almost shot herself in the proverbial foot, if I may say it that way. Sometimes we end up killing our own soldiers, which is crazy. Many times, people walk a life of condemnation, shame, or work, works-based kind of religion. As sin-defeated sin Christians who are trying to make it in. Jesus paid the price for all of it at Calvary. Every bit of it. He took back all of that heritage that was meant for us in the beginning. <clears throat> the benefits and the authority that Adam forfeited. The veil of the temple was rent. It was torn from top to bottom. Jesus has defeated death, hell, and the grave. And proclaimed it is finished. Yeah, we can watch that. Yeah, a person can choose to be fearful, but if you know the end and know who you are and where you're going, it makes a difference. You know, the United States is the most blessed, great country. But I fear for the United States right now. I fear for our leaders. I fear for our congressmen. I fear for how they are perceiving what we know as to be the truth. And have stepped back and taken God out of the picture here and God out of the picture here and said we don't want Him here. And then they have the audacity to complain about why is this happening? And why is this happening? And why is this happening? Let me give you a dull moment. You took God out. 
We need God in. It's where we need God. The Bible talks about, you know, we're exhorted to renew our minds daily in the image of Christ. We do not have to fight alone. Jesus already told us before He left, He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I have to go so I can leave the Holy Spirit for you. And He will lead you and guide you into all truth. He is the teacher. He will convict us of sin, and, but He will also keep you in communion and relationship right. with Jesus. Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. Make Him your bud. Your, I mean, you got to. Otherwise, you're going to be a, a, a vessel out in the ocean by every little wind that comes along. You're just thrown all over the place and you just hope you make it in. There's more to it than that. Serving Christ is relationship. It's not, it's not a club we're in. Jesus said, follow me. Come after me and learn of me. And I will make you fishers of men. He'll put that love message in you to where you can't help but tell somebody else. And He'll do it for anybody and everybody. Um, just real quickly, you don't have to turn there. I can go there. I'm going to wind this down. I ought, to, I ought to give you something a little more uplifting than that, right? In, a, in Matthew chapters 5 through 7 is like what everybody calls the Beatitudes. And in chapter 6, Matthew, starting at 24, No man can serve two masters, but he will either hate the one or love the other, or else he will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or, not, or God and mankind or God in this society. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life what you shall eat or whether you should drink or what you put on your body or it is not the life is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And of course I haven't seen, birds seem to know where to get food at. That's not a great illustration, but it's the one I can think of right now. Which of you taking thought in your mind can add one cubit into your stature? No one can. And why take you the thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, on the morrow is cast into an oven, shall he not much more clothe you? And then he goes on to tell them of little faith. But he didn't have all these epistles back and everything. So all they had was the beginning part. None of this was even written for them during that time. They had a faith struggle. They were trying to learn this just right out of the box. We got to hand it to us on a silver platter living in the day of grace. When they were trying to, they, were in, they weren't even in grace yet. They were still un, under the law and hadn't even chance. Jesus was still alive, so they weren't in grace. For after all these things do seek the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. But seek you first, first, seek first 
the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I, I, I was talking to a guy one time and he was telling me about some stuff that was going on in his life and what he was going through. And I was like, wow, I don't know if I can handle that. you know. But the only thing that came to my mind was when you don't know what to do, do what you know to do. When you don't know what step to take next, just do what you know to do. The answer will come. Because if you don't do what you know to do, you're going to go off course. Right. You're going to go off course. You all go off course. And I thought that was good because, you know, sometimes he just doesn't, you know, Lord, I just want to know what the next step is. He, you may not be ready for the next step, but you are ready to do the thing you know to do, which will get you to the next step. That's a good learning tool when you don't know what to do. I'm going to close with that. But I want to spend some time and give you and the Holy Spirit a chance to communicate. And I just want to respectfully ask, if there's not somebody here that actually knows Jesus, I don't mean just knows of Him, I mean has accepted Him, has actually said, Lord, I am a sinner. Come into my life. Change me because I can't change you. Do something into me that I've tried to do all my life. I've tried to fill it with this, and I've tried to fill it with this, and I've tried moving here, and I've tried this drug here, and I've tried this marriage here, and nothing ever will work. Nothing will ever fill that empty space that's in every person. Nothing. Except for Jesus Christ. So your heart is ready. Your mind hears it. So it's just basically choice. And then, isn't it great that God is fair and that He's true and He's just and that He gives everybody opportunity that we have chance to do those things which would be, say, Lord, save me. It's more than just I'm going through the most terrible point in my life. I don't have any money. I'm dead broke. My car's gone, my, my dog's gone, they stole my pickup truck, you know, the all the country song kind of stuff in here, you know. I think I'll try Jesus. That's kind of the wrong motivation. The motivation would be is if you die without Christ, you slip hell wide open for eternity. That's kind of tough, but that's the truth. That's why Jesus loves us so much because. He wants to try to get that message across to us that without Christ in a person's life, because He gives everybody a chance. Everybody. And I'm not trying to scare you into a decision. But that is the reality of a life without Christ. It's just an old message, but it's going to get preached here. And I don't think Pastor has a problem with it at all. Because he knows what I'm talking about. <coughs> So anyway, that being said, if there is anybody here, and it really doesn't matter if anybody's looking around, you have an opportunity today to make that choice. Because anybody here is basically tired of trying and don't really what the conditions that will happen if they die without him in their life, then I think now would be a pretty good time. I'm going to give the Holy Ghost some time here and I'm not going to say nothing. Father, thank you for loving us. Everything you've done for us, you willingly laid down your life. You didn't have to. You could have called 10,000 angels 
but they're ripping people apart. And you just said, they're mine. He did it for you. He died for you. Lord, just continue, Lord, to just speak to our hearts. Thank you for encouraging us. We know the end of the story. We thank you for everything you've done in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.